Hello crafters, I'm Jan Bay and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'm going to show you how to make this card which I'm calling a sliding windows card. It's not quite the way the designer meant the card to be but I did make a slight alteration to it and I will show you what I did when I get to that particular part. Okay so what happens is you open the card up and you have two sliding windows which expose some little uh, an image and a sentiment okay so that was my before video card this one was my attempt at a uh, masculine card so that's happy father's day so that one gets exposed there and my first uh, prototype is this one here but I felt that the images for that one were a bit too big for the size of this actual card. I think they would be great on maybe a 7x5 but I didn't try that. All of these are the uh, A4 size cards which is uh, C6. Okay. I'll put all the measurements for the inches for A4 cardstock users and metric in the box below. I'll also work out the inches measurements for less size cardstock users as well and put those in the box below. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do more or less this one. I'm having to change it round a little bit because I run out of this actual design, which I think is absolutely super. I didn't plan to have the bear there, but it just worked out like that. And it just worked out like that as well. So that I was really pleased of. But as I say, brilliant design, but I don't have enough for another card. So I'm going to start off and tell you the card pieces that you're going to be needing. Uh, first of all, you need a piece of Calypso coral that measures five and three quarter inches by five and three quarter inches, scored and folded at four and one eighth inch. So you get a little flap like that. And then you need a piece. Now this is the uh, extra piece that I've put on it. And this measures four and one eighth inches by five and three quarter inches. And then for the inner part of the card, you need a piece that's five and three quarters by six and five eighths inches, scored and folded at three and one eighth inches, which gives you a card where this side is smaller than that side. Okay. I'm putting these aside, the ones that we need to do a bit of work on. I think and then we need these two pieces which are for the mechanism that actually allows the windows to slide and you need um, one and a quarter inches by three and a quarter inches both uh, two pieces and then for the actual windows you need two pieces that measure two and five eighths inches by two and a half inches And you need a what I'm calling a back strip, which measures three and a quarter inches by seven and a quarter inches. And then for the front of the main card, you need some designer series paper. Like the previous one, this is from Happy Forest Friends, and this measures three and seven eighths inches by five and a half inches. And then for the inside of the um inside of this one once this has been adhered to the next piece and this measures three and a quarter inches by five and a half inches I name all my pieces so that I know exactly where they've got to go and I don't finish up being totally confused and then this is for the inside of my extra piece and that measures two and a quarter inches by five and a half inches and then two pieces for the windows and these measure two and three eighths inches by two and a quarter inches. Um, then you will need some scraps. Now those I've already done. Shall I show you them now? Uh, well, I will show you this one. You need a piece of uh, basic white cardstock, which measures 
two and seven eighths inches by five and a half inches. Now I've used my stamperators for this and I'm going to show you how I did it. I forgot to piece, bring a piece of cardstock over with me but I'll just pretend this is it and use it from the back. I won't be doing any actual stamping but I will show you how I did it. And then you will need scraps of Calypso coral and basic white for the sentiments and um, any other bits that you need. I'll show those as we go along. Right, so the first piece we need to work with is this one here with the small flap on it. What we need to do is with a ruler and a pencil, um, pencil, and I did tidy up before I started videoing and it's so silly because I always put away everything. Right, okay, this one's good. Now on this small flap, on the inside, you have got to measure in um, in a card base, that's this one. Gordon and pull it around. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong page. No, I'm not. I'm looking at the right page. Okay, so on this one, you need to measure in one inch. So if you do that here, up a bit, down here, an inch. and up here an inch and then join those two lines together I'm just using my grid paper to make my sure my cardstock is straight and then I can make sure that my line there is straight mind you not that this bit would be really bad if it wasn't quite correct Come on, where are you, you two? There we go. Okay, now we need to go for these two strips and there is no scoring or anything to be done on these. But what you do need to do on these is to measure up three quarters of an inch. Okay, let me turn this round so that I can see it properly without putting my head in front of you. Okay, so that's three quarters. Move it over three quarters. This one. This is a lot easier than last week's card. Not the last week's card was difficult, but this is more straightforward. Okay, so then we just draw our two. Three quarter of an inch together. I've got this light bouncing off the uh, ruler. But again, it's not absolutely crucial that this is three quarters of an inch. As long as you're only a tad out. There we go, so it's those. So what we're going to do first, oh I didn't get myself my silicon mat, hold on. As I say, I tidy up before I start videoing, which is not the brightest idea. Right, let's move that over. Now what we are going to do with these, we are going to, where we've got our three quarters of an inch, we are going to adhere it on here so that the line of my three quarters inch lines up with that and this end lines up with this and to make it easy to know where we've got to put the glue if you draw yourself a line and a line this gets covered up so you don't really need to remove all the pencil marks but you can do if you want to or at least you can with those that you can actually reach okay so that one and that one. So I'm using Tombow because I think this is probably the best for this. Um, as I've said before, I don't use Seal Plus 
so you're a better judge whether that's strong enough for this job or not. But I'm doing both pieces at the same time. I want to make sure that they're parallel with each other. Okay, so I'm going to put that one on there. I'm going to put that one on there. I put my cardstock on there and pulling it downwards to make sure that any excess glue gets pulled down rather than pushed upwards into my card. Right, now when you close this this way you should find that that is inside this bit. Now I can see that that one isn't straight. I'm just pushing it over a bit and that one's not quite straight either. Okay, so that's why I like to do the two at the same time. Right, okay, I can see they're both straight with this edge here, which means that's all nice and straight, so is that. Okay, now if you want to remove these pencil marks, you can do. Um, let me see how much we can see them inside. You can't, you can't really see them inside. Uh, they're in there. Um, but as I say, if you want to remove them, please do. Then the next piece you need is this card where I've said this one has got a little over flap, overhang. So what you need is this larger piece. You want glue on the back here so that it fits on there, okay? So you see larger one at the bottom, smaller one at the top. I'm going to put Tombow all over here. This piece is one of those pieces why I don't like to put any of my layers on to start off with because knowing me, I would put one on there whereas really I want it on here after these two have been adhered together. Okay, so you've got to match those two up. And I'm only doing one layer with my cardstock, one layer of designer series paper, because there's two layers here and there's going to be two layers at the back as well. So I'm just making sure that's all nice and straight lining up. Now before I go on, I'm going to put some of my DSP on. Now this is the one that's three and seven eighths by five and a half. I've left a quarter of an inch gap all around mine you may want to just do the one eighth so it fits a lot closer like that. Um, but I'm happy with the quarter of an inch. Because this isn't quite the design that I wanted, I'm doing the front of this card different from the front of my first one that had the bear on it. Yes, I think that looks nice and straight. So now the next piece I'm going to put on is the piece here, which is three and a quarter by five and a half inches. In fact, there's probably more work on doing the images and everything than there is putting this card together. Because the last two cards, and possibly, yeah, the last two cards, are, for me, they're children's cards, which is why I haven't decorated them on the front with any kind of bling. I'm very aware that, you know, children might start pulling them apart and uh, swallow. Right, now, this is the next piece we need. And we need to score this. I forgot to say about that, didn't I? Right, 
I'm going to use my trimmer, just two very easy bits of scoring here. And you need to score at three quarters of an inch and six and a half inches, or three quarters of an inch, turn it 180 degrees and three quarters of an inch again, which is what I'm going to do. So that just comes in and that just comes in. Right, let me just give that a burnish to make sure it's all nicely flattened down and straight. Now, if you close your card like that, this piece is going to go over there just to hold these two pieces down. And this should come within the edges of your card. They shouldn't show on the outside. Again, Tombow. Hold that one down flat, put that one down. I like to keep it a little bit below where the strips are. Let's see if I can show you how close it is to the edge. I think that comes under the heading of a tad. Okay. There we go. Right, now, first of all, this is how the card finished. All right, no more pieces to be added apart from the two windows. What I didn't like was this at the back. You could see that. Okay, but when you, if you don't put the back on it, to make the card work, you hold that piece down and then you move that so the windows move in and out okay in fact I'm going to leave that bit for the time being just to show you um, once I've got my windows on there but before I get the windows on I want to show you how I did this piece because that is going to be going on there and the windows will come over and cover these pieces up so what I did I took my stamparatus I have used several plates on this one so that I could um, show you what I've been doing, how I do this. Now because I've forgotten to bring a piece over, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the back of it. So please imagine this is my nice clean piece. What I did was I lined this up in here. Um, no, I didn't do that first, did I? Sorry, rewind. What I did next was I put the windows on. And to put the windows on, no measuring here. Just remember that you want the two and five eighths across the top. The two and a half inches is down the side. Okay, so they're going to be going on like that. And you just put some Tombow on here that for about a quarter of an inch. This way you'll be able to see the windows actually moving. Because when you put my piece on it, it's the base that actually moves. Now when you're doing this, aim to get that gap there the same as the gap down here. Okay, so I'm going to put that on. So 
this edge is lining up to the edge of the strip don't want to see it and this one also I want that sort of a gap there in fact I think I want probably a bit more than that in fact shall I measure it that might be helpful might not right above that it's got to be about a quarter of an inch I think Oh, spot on, quarter of an inch. And that's quarter of an inch as well. Okay. And just turn it over, make sure that it looks straight, that that looks straight there. Okay, so that is what you would you would see at the back of your card if you don't add my sheet on, which I'll show you in a jiffy. Okay, so what happens is, the way it should be, when you hold this bit down, the windows slide in. Okay. But to me, one, I don't really like this. And also, I don't think anybody, the recipient, is going to think, just hold that bit down. I think the recipient will get it and just open it up. Which is why I worked out how to do the designs in there. So my extra piece here... I am going to adhere on the back here so you can't see any of that but once you've done that it means that it's this panel here that moves not the windows okay the windows would stay like that see how that's moving which is why I wanted to get this one on here so that the windows would cover that up. Okay. I hope that's... I hope I'm um, explaining that. Okay. If I hold that like that. You see, it covers those little, little images up. So, how did I do it to get these images in place? Imagine this as my clear side as I said and imagine that you're adhering it so you've got it in the right position what I did was I drew lines around my windows like that now bearing in mind that these windows are two and a half inches tall so I measured one and a quarter inches so that I knew what was halfway on my window So that's one and a quarter for that one. And then one and a quarter for this one. So when my windows are open, totally open, that's the bit that's going to be covered up. So ideally, I want the end of my image to be here. Let me show you. With the exception of his tail and a tiny end bit of his tail, they are covered up at that point. So to do the stamping, I used my stamperatus. I put my piece in here. I'll turn it over in case I haven't cleaned my stamps properly. Okay, so on this one I've got the bird down here, haven't I? What I'm going to show you, because these are both red rubber stamps, I'm going to show you... Which one did I do the red rubber? Not that. Oh, this one, wasn't it? These are both red rubber stamps, so that's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to put my stamperators there. I'll get myself a stamp set to rest on. And then this, I know that I want it to go there. That's my centre. So I want this centred, which is by your. And then my mouse, which is this one here. Okay, so I am going to put him here. So 
that's about middle as well. And then I could stamp that down and I don't know if I can show you this. Yeah, more or less you can see that. Okay, so this one I had to change because I needed the sentiment from here. Okay, so I've dinked it up, stamped that, you can see where I've coloured it all, and this one I changed for the birds. Let me just show you the stamp sets that I've been using. For the mice, this is the one I've used for both of these cards. This is what I've used for the front of my card, which I'll show you in a jiffy. And this stamp set is a host stamp set, and it's still available until the 30th of June, while stocks last. Uh, we do have several nice little... Um, animal ones. This is the one where I used the hedgehog from for the first card and I've used the bird on this one here. Okay so that's happy hedgehogs and that stamp set has been carried forward to the new catalogue. Now this is one that is going to be retiring on 30th of June and happy birthday is what I've used on the front of this card but I'm planning to use it on the inside of the card I'm making with you. The dies that I'm using for the happy birthday on the inside, I'm going to be using that little one there from Stylish Shapes. And I will probably use the larger one to do a Calypso Coral layer. And then for the what I've got on the front of my card, I can't remember what numbers I used here, I'll have to check. I think it was number five and six, and these are from our stitched rectangle dies. So let me first show you what I'm putting on the front of this card. Let's move this one out of the way. Ah, here we go. This is the layer I'm putting it on, and that's the stamp. Oh, I know what I should have done. I should have gone over it like this. Oh well, I can show you how to do that. So what I did with this one, I did that as one plate and I stamped that one on there and then I took another plate but obviously took it off to show you just now. Uh, where's what I do with the sentiment one? There it is. Okay, so I did that separately. That was on a plate on its own, but that's how I did all of that one. So before I go on, let me just show you how I do that red, uh, the um, blue dots. First of all, once I've done my colouring, and that was Petal Parade, no, Petal, Petal, Petal Pink, the mouse is in Smoky Slate, his ears are in SU-1000, which is one of the natural, um, one of the new natural stamping blends. They come in sets of two and there's ten different colours all together. Um, that's what I did his ears. But then I went round all the edge with the pool party to give it a bit of background. But then what I did for the dots, I always did one two, three. I'm not going to do it all now because I can come back and do this once it's been adhered together. Okay, it just adds a nice little bit of a design to it. As I say, I'll finish that off later. So what I'm going to do, let's check that I've got the right sizes here. No, that's the right size there. So I need a larger one. Let's make sure that's the right size. Right, okay. So these are numbers, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. That's number six, that's number seven. Let me adhere these two together. Because I've had to do a 
larger um, image on the front. I couldn't put my happy birthday on the front, so I chose this one and took the sentiment from the inside, which was the it's your birthday, used it on the outside. But as I say, I'm still going to be using it on my card. There we go. So now this I'm going to pop up on here. So it's going to be quite oh no, I will finish this off because I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals. So just bear with me, it won't take too long. I have to say, on, nowadays when I do cards and they don't have a bit of bling on there, they look almost bare. Um, but I will stick to my principles on this one because it is children. The last couple of weeks I've been showing you that I use the adhesive sheets. But this is just to demonstrate I don't always use them. There are times when I do come back to dimensionals. And then when you do this, if you need a bit of time getting your layer in position, you can put some Tombow onto your dimensionals and that will give you a little bit of wiggle room. stand this up so I can see it. Now you've got to move over a bit. I think that's okay. Let me just quickly measure that. So Three eighths. Three eighths. Yeah, that's good. Let's get rid of these, otherwise they'll finish up all over the place. It does look as if it needs something else, doesn't it? If I can think of something, I'll come back to it. At the moment, I can't. <laughs> right, so now I'm going to adhere this piece in here. It's got to slide underneath the windows there. As you can see I didn't worry about erasing those pencil marks that I used as I was showing you how I got the uh, images in place. Right. Just tilt that slightly. You don't want to get any actual creases in the two strips underneath because that will spoil your mechanism. Okay, there we go. So that covers those up. So if you open it, they come out, apart from the little tails, of course. But if you just check what you have in your stash, um, you may have animals in there that fit better. So now I'm going to put my piece on here and what I do is I just glue this panel. I don't interfere with any of that. Um, before we do that, let's, we've got one more layer to go on here. I've probably got two layers for the windows as well. So this I'm going to put it into this corner 
because that is a bit that's going to be glued down. If you forget about it and do it once you've adhered that one on, it's not the end of the world. It, I've done it like that um, because I didn't think about it in, in advance, but it, it works okay. It's just that it is easier if you do it this way. Okay, I think that looks straight. Yep. Mm, maybe not quite so straight now. Yes, that's good. I'm happy. Right, let's go back to putting some glue on here. And then adhering this piece on, it's just a question of lining it up with your card front. Okay, so that should finish up lining up beautifully there. In fact, yep, that lines up all the way around. So the last bit now are our windows. On this paper, I couldn't quite decide which was the right way up or if there was a right way up. So what I decided was all of these flowers here, which are like the poppy seed heads, they are all facing upwards. So I assume that that is the correct way. I mean, branches can be going out, so that's fine. And all of these seem to be going downwards as well and I've just noticed there's a snail there so presumably, oh can't see it on that one can you can't see it anywhere else really any snails? nope but I'm going to take it that that poppy head is going that way sometimes you can look at the back and see which way it should be going but not in this case Okay. After I had uh, finished recording last week's video going on about how lovely our um, magnetic plate is, I saw that there was an update on the demonstrator's website that there had been manufacturing problems with it and they've been withdrawn. I was absolutely gutted. I was so disappointed. It was just my second week using my cut and emboss and then it taken away from me. So I'm still using it this week and I'll show you why. Now what I'm wanting to do now is from the stamp set Slim Sayings, which is this, it's one stamp but I've cut mine in two so that I can use the two bits separately and when I do that I always make sure that I just do one cut so that I can put them both back onto a block and use them as one stamp if I wanted to I don't like go in and trim bits off and tidy it up I just leave it one cut and that's that so I'm going to stamp this that in the middle. This is quite a nice juicy ink pad. That's good. And then birthday. Yep. 
give it a bit of pressure but not too much there we go so that's fine I'm going to move those two out of the way because they're quite uh, moist with all that ink on it and I am going to die cut these two and I am going to die cut layers for them as well so that's for the actual sentiment and that's for the Calypso Coral and I'll keep my dimensionals handy because I'm going to no I'm not going to pop them out am I because it's going on the inside okay right now what I do is I whenever I've finished using my magnetic plate I put this on top of it so it's got quite a weight on there but I have used it several times today so you can see what happens with it that's why um, stamping up are saying it's a manufacturing fault because the layers are coming apart but I do find that if I leave it overnight it does get stuck down again but obviously it's not a permanent fix so if you bought one from stamping up they will be arranging a credit for you so that's platform one that's my poor old magnetic plate. I'm going to do one with that. I'll do one with that. Now this just about fits. I'm going to tip it so that I can be happy that I have it straight. Be happy that I got happy straight. Right, that looks it. There we go. those and for birthday good that fits on not very straight on my paper but it doesn't matter now this just about fits in let's have a look oh no you're not straight at all Not sure that's straight, but I will be able to tell better once I re uh, watch the video once it's uploaded. Right, so put that at the bottom and that on the top. Pop that there. Close this up. That's it. So my silicon mat. Tombow.
I like it when things line up a layer like this. I think that's straight. So I'd be interested to hear what you think about this card, whether you like it with my layer on it or without my layer. It does make a difference, I have to say. There we go. That looks good to me. So now I'm going to pop them in here and hopefully it's going to look good on there. Just about. Look at that. That's should have checked that, shouldn't I? Yes, I know I've got them upside down at the moment. Mind you, I could do it. No, that looks as if I'm trying to squeeze it in. I'm going to keep them straight. So what do we want? Should we put them close together or shall we separate them? I think quite close together. Let me just have a look at my measurements here. Can you see that? No, you can't really see that edge, can you? So five inches plus two. Two, one. Okay, so that line there. That's about halfway. So if you do one above, one below, let's do it there. Just make sure it's straight. Good. And then this one. Right, you've got to go by the dark line now. <gasps> Oops, that was clumsy. I think that was about it, wasn't it? need something to go in here. It's bugging me, it's too, too, um, it's sparse. If I come up with an idea, you'll see it when it's photographed on my blog the day this video goes live, which will be on the 12th of June. Um, that's it, that is today's project. I hope you like it, I hope you give it a try, and I really be interested in your feedback about how you feel that I stop the windows moving and that's the bit that moves on mine um, because I think that's how people are going to be opening the card okay so there's those two that one this is from the um, T Boutique designer series paper beautiful design love that and oh, this is the Father's Day the men's one that's got the toppers with it, which I don't really, um, not overly keen on them, but it works, it does work. So there we go, all of them, and I would write on the back these dark colours. I would put some cut, die cut a oh, nice fancy white shape, and then put it on on the back. So there we go, that's today's project. I hope you like it, I hope you give it a try. And as I said, I will put the measurements, the inches and metric for A4 cardstock users and inches for letter size cardstock users in the box below. Um, if you have any comments, questions, um, please leave those in the comment section below. I'm always happy to read what 
you have to say um, and very very happy to answer any questions as well if you'd like to purchase any of the products that I've used for this card which will be listed below there'll be a link to my 24 7 online stamping up shop with the product code numbers for each item and if you do shop with me first of all thank you very much for your business I do appreciate it this is assuming that you don't already have a stamping up demonstrator that you work with um, but please use the hostess code so that when I send you happy mail at the beginning of next month which will be July already um, I'll be able to send you some free product as well as happy mail which my happy mail to you is I always make a handmade thank you card and I send it to you with an envelope and it is unused so you are free to use that or maybe even gift it on um, and also make a handmade thank you gift as well and that can be anything it varies from month to month depends which way my mind is working and what ideas I come up with but I hope it is really happy mail for you um, I know a lot of people do appreciate it so um, there we go uh, that's my appreciation for you shopping with me uh, very grateful and I look forward to seeing you next week in the meantime take care stay safe and of course happy crafting cheerio